Okay, right, put the kettle on. This is going to take a while. This is looking at orthographic sketching of real objects. In this case, this little well-used and abused uh, tape measure. So, we're trying to get a finished example up and running before we show you how to do it. Uh, if you actually have a look at an object you're trying to draw, in this case it's kind of handy because it's the size, it fits neatly on the and it runs across the page quite quick as well. It's a, a real object and it's roughly 60 millimeters square. It fits into our grid pattern that just still slipped in the back. But we need to get a, a better understanding of the object. So having something to hand rather than trying to think of an of a abstract object is the way we're going to go with this work from now on. So the elevation itself is roughly 60 millimeters square. So it's three of those 20 millimeter squares in the background. And we're just going to sketch out horizontal and vertical lines to make out the, the basics. We need to find some detail in there, and although I've not got the object handy, I do have it just out of sight of the camera. So we're looking this now for the centre of that arc. It's a quarter circle, it's roughly half the size of that 3x3 three three square. So about one and a half squares in, one and a half squares in, and using the natural turn of the wrist to try and get a best fit at the moment, curve for that top right hand corner. Looking at detail now, we've got to see that there's a, a second internal curve, the little bumpy outy bit for the internal mechanism sits, I think, and it's it's concentric. It's the same centre as the quarter circle we just drew. So coming in a slight distance either side, and we're going to try and fit a, a curve. In this case, it'll be a semicircle, which is just inside the quarter circle that's already been sketched. Now, there might be a little bit of adjustment to be made to that. That's the nature of a freehand sketch. If you had compasses, you could do something with uh, a little bit more detail. But for the freehand sketching at the moment, we're trying to get this concentric curve going around there, reasonable match on that side. And then turning the page, working the wrist from the inside, working the pencil to get that quarter circle arcing round from, if it was a clock face, 12 o'clock, round to 9 o'clock at the left-hand side. Keeping it nice and light at the moment and keeping an eye on the object itself. Dropping it in to see if it's a pretty close fit. It's not exactly the same size, but it's pretty close to the object, scaling roughly one to one. So now looking what else is on that, we've got a little bit sticking out the side. It's the tag for the, sorry about yawning, for the uh, end of the tape measure itself. And it's not quite full height up. It's sitting slightly below the surface. Just sitting that on top to get a better idea of where it would sit and where the end elevation would sit next to it. Now it's only one of our squares wide, so I've got it kind of close to the previous drawings, but let's just get the same height, three squares high, one square um, thick from front to back, and we can project some information across. At first it doesn't look like there's a lot of information there, but we're looking in a little bit more detail. That little arc we drew earlier on actually sticks out from the side, but it's within the the, the one square. So rather than adding on the outside of the rectangle we've drawn, this is now drawn on the inside. So the top of the arc is projected across, both front and back. Okay, so it's on both sides. But looking at the object, we can't tell from the drawing up above. Uh, and it's got a rounded edge to it. So we're going to project that across. So there's also the tag for the end of the tape measure itself. It's got to get projected across to be below the surface. And there is a little cutout the little shelf that, that sits in that we can't really see unless we look at the top view. So on the top view now, let's project that up. It's going to sit directly above, give a couple of squares gap, and we're looking for a rectangle this time that is roughly one deep front to back and three wide across the front. So we're going to build it up nice and light, taking the same widths as below. Now remember that those bumpy outy bits are inside our overall one square width. We're not building out. So we're going to produce a couple of parallel lines for that uh, for that space, projecting up to how, how wide they're going to be. So two lines showing where the arc goes up above, and then a couple of internal horizontal lines to show where that's going to fit. Now I think you can see it on the drawing that's already been done on the left hand side. But obviously the first time this has been drawn, you wouldn't be able to look at any reference point other than the object itself. So those little sticky outy bits are curved on the corners. So little curves in there and there. The rest is more or less a rectangle. Yes, it does round off, but we can't see it in that view. Okay, the tag that sticks out, we're going to project the sticky outiness, how far it sticks out to the left from down below. And the width, if you have a look at it, how it sits in. 
and that little cutaway, the hole in the top that the tape measure actually sits in and, and actually moves out from. Now there's actually a little bit more detail in that this object is made in two halves, or the shell at least is, uh, two halves of the casing. So there'll be a little break line down the middle for it to add on. Can we be firming a little bit of detail around the edge now? Um, starting to see a little bit clearer. We can see from the drawing on the left that it's pretty similar to what we've sketched or what I've sketched already. There's that break line between the two halves lightly sketching in, roughly in the middle. And it's got maybe a two millimetre or so gap between the two. There is also that same break line on the end elevation, although I've not drawn it yet. So let's just put that same detail across coming down. It would be seen. We can look at the object itself, that double line. And I think we've got sketched in the bulk of that drawing. Now you see a difference between the left hand finished drawings, if you like, and the ones we've been working on or I've been working on. We now need to start firming things in. I've moved on to using an ink pen for this and for arcs, it's always a good idea to draw the arc first and join the straight line on. It's a simple little technique. So if you draw the arcs and then continue the end of the arc with a straight line, you'll get a slightly better uh, end result. So that's it going down one side. It's got to go down the other. This slightly different from left to right. So this has got the right angle corner, although looking in detail, those corners are actually slightly radiused. So there's no such thing as a sharp corner. And a lot of products are like that. They don't have the sharpest of edges. So we start looking in detail. The bottom line is horizontal because it sits on a flat surface. The sticking out tab sticks out. And we don't see any of the detail on top or in the back or break lines in this particular view. So we've got that one more or less nailed. Stick it back on top and see it's pretty close. And end elevation. Again, we're going over the lines we've constructed. Some of the construction lines will disappear and it's just a firm outline we're going to be left with. And we're going to look at that top bit slightly radius in the corner. I think you can see the sticky out the bump at the back. It would be at the back in this case. Uh, and the one at the front, this arched bit that we were drawing earlier on in the elevation. So vertical lines coming down using the firm thing in pen. Horizontal line along the bottom. There's a little step in there for that break line, which is a little add-on. And on the top, there should be a little break line there as well, but I've missed that out. The tag, where it sticks out, and the groove it's in is a little bit more detailed. But again, looking at the object, seeing what's happening there, will give you a clear understanding. Break lines between the two halves down the middle. So the top's the last thing to get done. We're finishing a few little, tiny little bits of detail, and there's a fair bit of detail to go in the top. Uh, let's see if you can have a look here. We've got the bumpy out bits at the side. So there's those curves going in. We've already drawn these. It's just confirming in your own mind what's actually visible. Again, if you have the real thing there, stop and look at it. Parallel lines, or hopefully parallel lines for the front and back of the casing. We've got the break line. We've got the end. That's a little step in again. It just shows that break line a little bit clearer. Now look at this detail. It's a slight... The, step back on that part if you can zoom in with the video and then there's the, the main part we've seen so it's a little bit of detail even going in at this stage is not unusual then the the slot within which it fits and I think there's a little bit of plastic inside there a couple of little lines to go on as well oh break line better put that in firmly so we've already got the finished version on the left hand side we've still to name the views but I think from there You'll be able to see how it's possible to take a real product, produce an elevation, an end elevation and a plan. And if you don't have that 3D sketch, which you wouldn't have at the top left hand corner, you're using the real object as your source for adding detail of size and proportion. So a couple of lines, maybe not as accurate as it could be, but for a first attempt on this complicated, well, relatively complicated form, we've got the three views we're looking for for this tape roll. Your chance now to find something you'd like to have a go of. Remember, that would be the elevation. That would be the plan. And because this is slightly off center for the camera, you're not going to see the end elevation too well, but you get the general idea of what that would be if you'd like. So from now on, we're going to start working with real stuff, folks. Let's see what you've got at home to try.